Hi, this is Mike again. Today, I want to take the time to discuss a subject that is near and dear to my heart, which is the abolishment of the United States Department of Education. It began operations in May 1980 after the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare was split into two different cabinet-level positions by the Department of Education Organization Act. This action took place during the Carter administration. It falls under the supervision of the U.S. Secretary of Education. As of 2018, 4,000 employees were working in this department, which manages an annual budget of over $68 billion. It is also responsible for post-secondary loans, grants, work-study assistance, student loans, and the establishment of policies to coordinate and administer federal-level assistance for education. Because of the cost of operations for this department and the fact that education in the U.S. is highly decentralized, there have been calls to abolish the Department of Education. Not only would such an action save money, but it would also streamline the government by shifting the focus away from financing and toward curriculum development. Over 27% of the current budget manages the current student loan program. Here are some pros to consider if such a hypothetical move were to be made. First, student scores in the United States are not improving under the Department of Education. The United States has not seen a glimpse of the top 20 in any of the subjects tested in recent years when comparing the assessment results from over 500,000 students in over 65 countries. Looking at the reading, science, and math standards, the U.S. falls notably below most Asian countries and significantly under the United Kingdom. Performance levels remain the same, but there is no advancement. While other countries are advancing in these areas, the U.S. remains stagnant. By abolishing the Department of Education, it might be possible to get some fresh ideas into our local educational systems. Certainly, the other issue other than the Department of Education is the control of the teachers' unions. The unions have too much control and political influence over the education system. Steps should be taken to reduce their political influence and control over the local educational system. Second, the presence of the Department of Education may not be constitutional. There is an argument to be made that the Department of Education should be abolished because its presence is unconstitutional. Although the matter has not been brought before the Supreme Court since both parties grew to accept its presence in the 1980s, the Tenth Amendment does say that the powers not delegated to the government by the Constitution or prohibited by the states are reserved to the state governments. Some argue that the Department of Education promotes the general welfare of the country, it is not a binding legal decree. If the structure of the government offices does not follow the vision that the Founding Fathers had for the country, then is it a legal department? Third, the Department of Education uses its role in the federal government to do its bidding. The few times that the Department of Education gets involved on a national level to address schools almost always include the use of money. When Common Core Standards were released by the Department, states were not required to implement this system. If they chose not to do so, then the federal government said that it would remove any funding from the state that it was providing for educational purposes. If you wanted to get the resources from No Child Left Behind or Race to the Top, then you had to implement what the Secretary directed. Instead of promoting individualized educational systems that could benefit students, the Department of Education was blackmailing state governments into using its system. Abolishing this department would eliminate this practice at least in the short term. Fourth, the cost of the Department of Education is phenomenal. Since its creation, the Department of Education in the United States has spent over $1.4 trillion. This funding, which primarily comes from taxpayer dollars, has had zero impact on test scores. It has come to a point in the United States where teachers must teach to the test in their classrooms to ensure that they can keep their jobs and that their kids can go to a school that is close to their home. Over the past 40 years, results have stayed flat or declined in most categories, which shows just how wasteful this system happens to be. All the country does is spend more without seeing a return on that investment, which is why there are growing calls to get rid of it. Each year we hear that the answer to getting a better education is to increase spending, Yet this solution which has been implemented over the last few decades has failed to yield better results. Fifth, the student loan system could be privatized to make them more efficient. Pell Grants would likely transition over to Health and Human Services or the Interior if the Department of Education were to be abolished. That would keep those funds locked in from the government to help with the cost of tuition. The government-backed student loans would then go into the private sector where the free market, not Congress, would get to dictate what the interest rates are for future revisions. However, such a move would hurt those who are in default or on a repayment schedule for eventual forgiveness. Those programs could be brought along as part of the mandate. People would receive better services with less runaround using this option. It would also prevent the government from using this system to grant political favors like is being proposed now. Sixth, it would eliminate all centralization from the U.S. educational system. Community-based education tends to be more effective than centralized systems that attempt to use a one-size-fits-all approach. 
The idea of not letting any children get left behind is noble, but the US proved that what happens on paper does not always transfer over to real life situations. NCLB created high stakes testing elements that punish schools that underperform even though they have little say about who attends. Then the adequate yearly process was eventually tapped out at 100%, eventually requiring all students to be proficient in 2014. That never happened. By abolishing the Department of Education, the US could send the states the authority to meet their specific needs. Although there would still be some centralization at the state level, it would be nowhere near the issues seen at the national level. 7. It eliminates the bureaucracy that creeps into the educational system. By switching to a state-based set of standards instead of following national guidelines, the Department of Education can no longer muddy the waters with their bureaucracy. There is nothing wrong with the presence of standards, but they are usually insufficient in their determination of what the actual educational experience is in the United States. Even with clearer and more rigorous requirements in place because of common core, there are still states that meet or exceed them right now. 8. Some schools would be able to get more money. Once the abolition of the Department of Education started, there would be a transition period where any remaining funding in the budget would receive distribution based on the current rules of the system. When it is gone, then there would no longer be money tied to grants, specific behaviors, or curriculum enhancements. That means each state could increase or decrease its taxes independently to manage their finances better at the local level. That means states could manage their levies through property taxes, sales tax, lottery sales, or whatever combination of funding tools they wanted to use as long as they were compliant with local, state, and national laws. Compliant with local, state, and national laws. 9. There would be less duplication in the national system. There are hundreds of different agreements that exist right now in the US educational system between individual states, school districts and the Department of Education. Each one has a different value assigned to it as well. That means there are multiple bureaucrats who are sending paperwork back and forth to help manage the system. Numerous processes are duplicated with this effort. By ending the duplication in the centralized system, taxpayers could save billions of dollars each year in meaningless labor. It would also make each state answerable to their voters for their spending habits. When each community would need to be accountable for every dollar they spend on education, there would likely be much more wisdom in the transactions. 10. It would add more diversity to the American educational experience. The educational system in the United States is already one of the most diverse in the world. Students from around the globe have access to an almost unlimited number of choices on what and where they can study. Families can move to different communities and still enroll their children in a local school. There are online and homeschooling options to consider throughout the country as well. This diversification would increase when abolishing the Department of Education because each state could set priorities individually. That means families could avoid spending money on educational items that they feel are not appropriate for themselves or their children. People would have more opportunities to broaden their knowledge base in any field to enhance their future career opportunities. 11. It could reduce student stress in the classroom. For the students who want to do well with their educational experience, standardized testing can cause high levels of stress. It is such a common problem that some of the testing materials that teachers receive include instructions on what should be done if a student vomits on their exam. Even the most intelligent students in the classroom can feel the grip of anxiety because there is so much pressure to perform in the modern learning environment. Although getting rid of the Department of Education is not a guarantee that improvements will happen, it could be a step in the right direction. Although testing may be stressful for some students, the DOE advises, testing is a normal and expected way of assessing what students have learned. Thank you for watching this video from Nehemiah Reset. We hope you found it informative and helpful. Our mission is to assist Christians in developing a biblical worldview as it pertains to relevant cultural issues. We seek to inform Christ's followers, equip them, and mobilize them into action to vote for their biblical values and to actively engage the culture. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe to our Rumble, YouTube and Facebook channels. You can also visit our website at Nehemiah Reset. org to learn more about our vision our resources and our upcoming events thank you for your support and god bless you